I lead at EC3, juniors training eighth graders in the Hardin County Schools to become the leaders of tomorrow. Doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do. Get out of your way to make someone else's day. Work harder than anyone else. Protect your integrity and be kind. I lead at EC3. I'm Larry McKnight, I'm from John Harden, I'm part of the Leadership Skills Group. I'm Melissa Napier, and I'm from Central. I'm Reese Nickel, and I'm also from Central. We are leadership, leadership skills. <laughs> okay, so first we're going to get into an icebreaker game, just so you guys can like get, get to know your group members a little bit more. You're going to tell your group your name, even if you already know who each other is. Um, a person who is a leader to you, and you're going to decide as a whole group a team name for your table. What, are, what is this team's table name? SpaghettiOs. What is this team's name? The normals. What is y'all's team name? Big chickens. Big chickens. Big chickens. Okay. Okay. Pickles. Okay. And right here. Swifties. Dubs. Okay. I like all y'all. Y'all are all creative. Yes. Just a lot. Everybody at your table one through five. Everyone number y'all selves at your table one through five. One, two, three. So just remember your number for when you play the game. That remember who's what number. So I'm going to tell you about some skills and qualities of a leader. Um, some great qualities of a leader is uh, being honest with your peers and with yourself. You know, throughout all walks and paths of life. Um, when you're doing something that feels hard or different, having confidence in yourself, knowing that you have the ability to do it, that's something that a leader possesses. Um, being Having commitment to what you do and who you're with, you know, that's a big thing and part of a leader because if you're switching up then you're not really a leader, then you're just somebody. Okay, some skills of a leader is some patience. You cannot get heated in the moment. I know a lot of us do, but having patience will go a lot longer and help a lot more than you think. Being encouraging is really important. If you're putting everyone else down, you're not a leader, you're a tyrant. Okay, be a leader, step up, and encourage everyone even through our times. Being an empath. Does anyone know what an empath is? Kind of. It's being able to tell when someone's like emotionally unstable. <laughs> so if you can tell someone's upset, it's picking them back up and making sure they're not getting more upset. And the last thing will be reliability. If you're unreliable, you're not a leader. They can't count on you. We have a fun game where we're going to put all the skills and qualities into a leader into play. It's called Maneuver the Mates. For this game, the whole purpose of the numbers was so, you know, who's blindfolded and who's talking. So my number one, she'll be first blindfolded. You're just going to tie a blindfold on their face like this. Make sure you can't see, don't cheat. And my number two is you're going to stand behind them. You're not going to walk through the maze with them. And you're going to lead them the way, through the, the maze. Take two big steps forward. Take a very small step to the left. Step up twice. One more time. Step up. Amazing! Woo, yes, <laughs> so we do have some rules with this. Um, one, be patient, be encouraging, don't get mad at each other. You have a 30 second time limit each maze. You're going to get through all five mazes. Uh, you want to have the least amount of time and the least amount of time for each group, they get a prize. So the winner gets a prize. Um, if another team comes while you're still doing your maze, you stop there, go to the next maze, and you also get a 10 second penalty. That's about all. Um, so y'all can go ahead, stand up, go in a nice orderly fashion, find an idly person.
going on in each group. There's one thing. Yes. <laughs> so each one, each leader that was guiding the person through the maze was actually being very patient for the, from what I saw. They were giving great directions and working with how the other person reacted to them. I know some people got their lefts and rights mixed up, but everyone stayed calm and that was amazing. So we're going to compare your all scores real quick and then the winning table gets a prize. So my table had four minutes and three seconds. Miss Wright's table? Three minutes, 46 seconds. Okay. So my team was the Pickles, and uh, we had six minutes, 26 seconds. <laughs> seconds. Good job. It's uh, good. My group had seven minutes, well, eight seconds. <laughs> Yeah, my group had six minutes even. Okay. So, Miss Wright's group. Miss Wright, is that y'all? Is that y'all? Okay, so. So, congrats to the winning table. But you all aren't special. Everyone gets prize. Yeah. <laughs> y'all did great today. Good job, everybody. I hope you all learned something. We have one more game for you all. We have about five minutes left with you all, so this is going to be a fast game. And my friend Larry over here is going to explain it to you all how to play. Okay, so this game is called uh, Secret Leader. And as you guys pick numbers in the beginning, uh, we're gonna walk around and tell each group one number who's gonna be the secret leader. You guys are gonna get us stand up in a circle, so we're gonna make a movement. Everybody has to copy them without the one person guessing who the leader is. Okay, so you guys ready? So number three, stay at your table, or don't stay at your table, get up, and come over to the front with me, that way you don't hear what they're talking about. Okay, we have a few minutes, so we're gonna do just one round of this. Uh, y'all can stand up if y'all need to, but make sure your whole table stands up if you're going to stand up. You don't have to, but if that's what your gesture requires, go for it. Stay near your table, do not wander off, and go. When you finish, raise your hand and let us know. Mostly hearts, 
you're reliable, and if you got mostly the smiley faces, you have a positive outlook. And if you got mostly flowers, you're a team player, and we'll explain this after the game. All right, so if you have mostly stars, um, can you come over to this side right here? If you have mostly hearts, go over there. If you have smiley faces, go over there. And if you have mostly flowers, go right here. Do I have you five right here? Go right here to this table. <laughs> okay, Jack and Chase, I'm gonna need you two to go over there with them. One, two, three, wait. Yes, yes. Right can you go to this table right here? Uh, all three of you. Yep. There you go. One person. All right, so we're going to be building towers today out of cups. And we're not going to give you any instructions except that you can't um, put your chairs on the table because we had a group do that last time. But we're going to give you four minutes to plan out how you want to build your tower. So you guys can go ahead and start doing that. Um, don't build yet once you get your cups. Wait to do that. <laughs> but there is no talking. So I hope you guys plan it out very well. So you guys can begin now. Sunflowers um, or team player. 
What is a team player? It's a person who plays or work, works well as a member of a team or group, which you guys show working together, building the cuffs. Um, how does a team player act? They're very flexible, they're reliable and responsible, they lend a helping hand, and they're respectful to all of their group members. Why be a team player? Collaborative problem solving leads to better outcomes, and teamwork le leads to learning. So, what do these strengths really mean? You can optimize your capabilities as a leader by understanding your personal strengths, as well as strengths of those around you. And it's important to respect what everyone brings to a group while also being unafraid to lead people to unlocking their full potential. So hopefully you found you found understanding of the different traits that help with this, and we hope you have a good time. All right, so actually, now that we've learned all of the personality traits, we are going to switch you up, all the personality traits, into different groups to build the tower to see different ideas. So we're going to get you into separate groups. Give us one second to do that. All right, we're going to give you guys two minutes to plan. You can draw on the back of your papers or talk about it. All right, is everybody ready? You have four minutes to build. Go. No talking again. Yes. So instead of hearing the information from someone themselves, 
it went through a whole bunch of people and it got twisted. That's why when you communicate with people, you need to make sure you're doing it effectively and correctly and actually talking to that person so that way rumors aren't started and people don't get hurt. So communication is the process by which information is exchanged between individuals through a common system of symbols, signs, or behavior. There's two types of communication, verbal and nonverbal. Verbal is the use of our words through speaking and writing. Some examples are talking to your friends, presentations like this one, phone calls, giving directions, and teaching. Nonverbal communication is a way of communicating without using spoken or written words. This can be um, shown by eye contact, touch, body language, gestures, and facial expressions. So, some reasons why communication is so important is because it can help you with problem solving. Successful teams use and need communication to be successful. Um, communication can encourage people, you know, words of affirmation, and it can also help people from getting hurt. Some effective communication skills consist of eye contact, questions, body language, silence while others are talking, be clear when you're talking, and showing empathy. Some effective listening skills is giving the speaker your undivided attention, providing feedback, using your body language to show that you are engaged, and withholding judgment. Okay, we're going to play another game. This game is called Poison Dark Frog, and we're going to get in one big circle. We're going to pick one person there to go outside the Adriana. So when that person comes back in, they have to try to guess who the Poison Dark Frog is which is going to be one person in the circle. Everybody knows who that person is, except for the person that went outside with Adriana. The poison dart frog has to stick their tongue out at people, and when you get their tongue stuck out of you, you have to go like this. Okay? So this, and then we're going to see how nonverbal communication is shown. Okay, the person that goes with Adriana is... Yeah, okay, you get in the circle now. Okay, you get three guesses, okay? Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Go. Yeah. Chase, Logan, yeah. Alex. No. 